Honey, how are you, my friend? Very good. Kya hal hai? Okay. I'm glad you're back. Yeah. I like you. Go ahead. <laughs> Go ahead. Um, all right. The, the Christian faith stresses a lot of love, a lot of forgiveness, and you were just speaking to that gentleman about how he will judge everybody rightly. However, what really troubles me is this: Christian dogmas all, you know, concur on this one thing. that all of us are born with this original sin correct this hereditary like this this thing that we just inherited from adam and we 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 are just born with it when we're born however i look at the bible jesus never mentioned that in ezekiel in the old testament chapter 18 verse 20 the soul that sins shall die the son shall never bear the iniquity of the father the father will not bear the iniquity of the son the righteousness of the righteous will be upon him and so on the whole chapter talks about how your righteousness will lead you to you know heaven and then when jesus talks about it and he's in the crowd this one everybody is asking him, how do we inherit the kingdom he brings a little child and puts him on the throne it says you have to be as innocent as that child to inherit the kingdom he never said it nothing about original sin nothing about the trinity him being god he stressed two things that love thy thy lord my father and your father and love thy neighbor that's the only thing he came up with do you believe everything jesus said sir i believe that he was born from a virgin no 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 let me ask you a question i know you believe that because you're a muslim yes i'm asking you if you believe everything jesus said in the new testament i really don't know what to say because when i buy these bibles with red writings and i go to certain pastors they tell me the red writing is not really what jesus said okay. and these other people tell me different yeah well yeah that's a classic um, side step there but the reality is that when you look at jesus you see first of all what he said to the people who refused to come to him he told them that they were of their father the devil when he talked about the human condition he very clearly described it and you go all the way through the sermon on the mount and you will see that the standard that he set is impossible for any human being to attain and he said also very clearly as he as he described very very precisely in the in the book of romans in romans chapter 3 that all have sinned and come short of the glory of god and there is not even one righteous no not one if you believe that statement you must believe that what the apostle paul is telling us there is precisely what he understands the christian to be one who is a sinner now the reason you do not believe in the very sinful uh, reality of the human mind and the human fallen condition is because you also do not believe as a muslim that man is created in the image of god isn't that not is that not right yes it is okay and that therefore you have absolutely at that point no way to even explain the moral framework so the moral framework that you actually argue about comes to you from where it comes from the quran mainly okay however i do believe in the scriptures i do believe in the gospel of jesus when john talks about the gospel he says and he went to this town and he preached the gospel and mark talks about jesus going to this other town and he preached the gospel that gospel i believe came to jesus heart from that father and that's what i truly believe none of these gospels had any signature of jesus on it it's nobody is really certain and it is debated until today whether these gospels are true or not okay you move your say just shifting subjects honey so let me try try to zero in on you and i what i would like to do is quickly show you exactly what it is that jesus is talking about when he reminds us of uh, these truths in the sermon on the mount but as i'm talking to you here's what i want you to try and first explain to me when the bible says all have sinned and come short of the glory of god what do you think that means i really think that nobody is perfect that's what i believe nobody is perfect yes okay Except then god. how do they find forgiveness 
Forgiveness is something that only God can grant. That is correct. So we are on equal keel, or even keel now. There is none righteous, no not one, nobody is perfect, so nobody in his or her condition can inherit the kingdom of God. Only God can make that decision to give it to you. All right? Yes. Jesus says, if any man come unto me, I will in no wise cast out. He that hath the Son has life. He that has not the Son has not life, but shall come into condemnation. When as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of the living God, even to them that call upon his name. Now he goes into that tremendous conversation with Nicodemus. And Nicodemus is the ruler and the teacher of the Jews and so on. And he is talking about all that he knows. And Jesus looks at Nicodemus and says, you are a teacher and you don't know that it is impossible for you to get into the kingdom without the new birth, without being born again. And here he makes a very categoric statement that I want to read for you because I think that will answer the question and I trust will at least be on an even keel by that, uh, by that statement. Here it is. As he's dealing with Nicodemus, here he says to Nicodemus here, I tell you the truth, no one can enter the kingdom of God unless he's born of water and the spirit. Flesh gives birth to flesh, but the spirit gives birth to spirit. You should not be surprised at my saying you must be born again. And what he is saying is, everyone born of the flesh cannot inherit the kingdom of God. That spiritual birth needs to take place. And he goes on to say, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believes on him should not perish, but have everlasting life. So my answer to you, honey, is this. You believe none of us is perfect. We are all imperfect. The Bible calls that falling short of the standard of God. So if you don't want to accept the uh, original sin, you then have to explain why none of us is perfect. And none of us has that capacity to be perfect. Original sin basically means that in my own condition, I'm not able to come to God and meet his complete righteousness, no matter how hard I try, and many of them try. All this means is that in my strength and in my ability, it is impossible for me to attain the kingdom of God. He's made the way. He's provided it. And I would strongly suggest to you that you try and read the Gospel of John without taking those red letters over to somebody who tries to tell you that that is not there. Because when you go back to the Quran, the Quran also tells you he never died. And therefore he never rose again. There's no living historian of the scriptures that I know today who tells me Jesus did not die. It's only in the Quran you see it, and it's a false statement. He died on the cross. History demonstrates that. And when he died on that cross, three days later he rose again. He offers you eternal life, honey. And you are not perfect. I am not perfect. God is perfect. He is the only one, and he's giving you his son, through whom you and I can be seen as perfect in his sight. We've all sinned. He provides the way. And a new birth is recognized only when that spirit comes and changes what you want to do. And I hope that will happen to you one day too. But nice talking to you. We'll be here after the meeting too.